Okay, I'm here with uh, Marty and Dennis at, uh, I guess, have them describe this ham radio booth. So take us away. Well, hi, this is uh, called Not Your Grandpa's Ham Radio. And uh, while there are a lot of traditional ways of using ham radio, there are also some areas where we like to play. And we brought the things we build and play with. Uh, it's more experimental, uh, a lot of chance to, uh, to build and try things out uh, with either using commercial components or things we roll on our own. Uh, uh, the two of us like to do this quite a bit, microwaves and all sorts of other experimentation. Dennis happens to be a, an electrical engineer. I happen to have no formal engineering or electrical training. I'm a retired CPA. But we both play with it and we both have fun with it and we both build. And we're trying to share some of the excitement of what you can do with ham radio with people here who like to hack and build and so on. We think it's a great mix. Okay, me... give us a tour of a, you, the equipment you have here. Dennis, would you like to... Yeah, I'd like, actually like to add a couple of more things to that that I think that are really important to understand. It, what Marty said, that we think amateur radio is a great launch pad for kids getting into technology. For myself, you mentioned I was an electrical engineer. Ham radio contributed to me getting into engineering. And Probably if I had not gotten into ham radio, I might have gotten into another profession, but it's a big part of it. Having an amateur radio license is a good thing to have on your resume sometimes. So we like to promote it from that standpoint. But to give you a, a, a quick rundown of the, of the booth, we, as Marty said, we're promoting some alternative technologies that we use in ham radio. Uh, some of the newer things that people are interested in are software-defined radio. And software-defined radio is a system where we take the incoming radio signal, which is an analog signal, we convert it over to a digital signal and we process it in a computer to recover audio or to actually modulate and transmit. And we've got a whole display over here on the side of various SDRs, commercial and uh, uh, some, uh, some pieces that are really easy for people to hack. Um, we're showing some things that are not ham radio. The ADS-B, which is considered, the, that's this display right here. This is the next generation air traffic control system. And so it's an interesting thing for us because of the radio technology involved. Now, is this tied to the internet or not? It is. Well, right now it is because we can't. The, the building's shielding us from being able to receive the signals here at our booth. If we were outside, we, would would, not, we, we wouldn't be using be the internet. Direct, receiving direct from the airplane. No, we have no internet. Most of what we do is not connected to the internet. It's real radio. Yeah. We are truly wireless and no infrastructure. Okay, so what about some of this other stuff? You got a lightning detector. Okay, lightning detector. Some of, one of the earliest receivers ever built was a lightning detector, and so one of our uh, makers, Wayne, has uh, duplicated that uh, that system. We can detect lightning strikes. Of course, there are no lightning strikes around right now, so he has a a it's a gas a gas grill starter. It's a little igniter that produces a produces an electric spark. And when we, uh, when we produce the spark, you can see the light flash and you can see the meter move. We're actually counting lightning strokes by that. So if we just happen to have an electrical storm cruise through here, we'd probably have this thing kind of going wild. Here's some more lightning, so now I'll focus on your... Okay. There's your lightning strokes. Okay, then you got these link so, okay. blocks and all kinds of other things. Yes. So, one of the things that we are, are able to do as amateur radio operators is build our own equipment. We can modify commercial equipment to suit our needs. As you know, the Linksys routers and other routers in 80211 802, commercial hardware is covered under FCC regulations part 15. Part 15 prohibits consumers from modifying that equipment in any way. So they can't put bigger antennas on them, they can't put uh, uh, amplifiers and that type of thing. Fortunately for us, we share part of the spectrum with the 802.11 portions of the spectrum. So we are able, as amateurs, under licensed under Part 97, to go in and modify this equipment to suit our needs. Which we have done. Which we have done. A group of hams, not us, I, I have to say, this wasn't us that did this, another group has done this. Two groups actually have taken the, the uh, Linksys routers, written new software based on what's called Open, open WRT. It's a mesh routing protocol. So these are full mesh routers. And they're just here. Right, that's the that's actually the status of the network. 
We've got a very small network here. It's just kind of a demo setup. But the idea is that we, we operate these routers within the ham band, so we're legal under Part 97. Modifying, having modified the software, we run on a specific channel that's shared with the ham bands. With this system, both with the Linksys hardware that we get from Ubiquity, we can get some fairly long-range communications that's very, very robust. So it's, is this like an internet system that's independent of the internet? Yes, exactly. That's exactly what it is. And just like that, we can send voice, we can send data, we can send video. Right. And, for example, at a, at a race course, over a venue like this, at an accident scene. Uh, well, the, the, bigger, the bigger application of this, and, and this is, and I'll, I'll tell you, it's the city of San Diego, or the county of San Diego, actually. There's a group of hams in San Diego County that have built a countywide network based on this equipment and software that's used for disaster communications, emergency communications, which plays a huge part in what hams are all about. A big piece of what we do is providing emergency communications. I bet Jura County is doing the same thing. There's, there's counties all over the country actually doing this, but San Diego being close by, we are familiar with the guy, we know the guys down there. They've built this network that rings the county with, uh, with this hardware and they're, they're members of the group, this emergency communications group, can set up the router wherever they are. They can set up a portable system and communicate with the backbone network from wherever they're located. And it's a, it's again, it's a mesh network, so it's very robust. Uh, it's all ad hoc. So here's one thing, I take it, uh, uh, this type of system, that means you do not have to pay subscriber fees, router fees. Bingo. And Absolutely. All and we own it. <laughs> and it's all under Part 97. So it's not regulated by any of those other, uh, any of the other uh, things that you're talking about. That there's nothing to do with public utilities. It's completely independent of any commercial system. But with it being Part 97, that means you cannot use bad language and encrypt. Right. There's, there's several things that come out of that. One is that we can't encrypt the data. That is correct. We can't, well, bad language, of course, that, that goes without saying. The other thing is it cannot be used for any commercial purposes. So nothing involving exchange of uh, exchange of money or anything like that. That's why it's amateur. And we can't send music. We, well, yeah, we can't send music. But for emergency communications, But you it's, can do it's, things like experimentation. Yes, you know, modify the box, yes. and if it smokes well, then that's... So we go get another one. You got another one, 20 bucks. We try again. <laughs> and that's the beauty of the link sets. I mean, we pick those up at the swap meet. We pick them up on eBay for 10 bucks. So, you know, it's a it's a disposable commodity. We can we can smoke them, we can kill them. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. So it's a, it's a pretty interesting uh, pretty interesting application. And the, uh, the, the equipment's working at 2.4 gigahertz. We've got equipment working at 3.4 gigahertz and 5.7 gigahertz. And the beauty of the other frequencies is, as you know here in the, at the Maker Fair, and especially in Expo Hall, there is a lot of 2.4 gigahertz RF in here. There are lots and lots of routers. So it's almost impossible to make connections with our equipment. But if we went to 5.7 gigs, we wouldn't see that. We'd be in the clear. So. Um, and that's because we share that spectrum of 2.4 gigahertz with, with 802.11. So that's that's the deal. So anyway, other than that, so have you look at been had any opportunity to look around Maker Fair and see everything else? Well, I think it's impossible to see everything else, but we take as much time as we possibly can to go out and see the other uh, other displays. You know, we we have a lot of friends here. We go and visit. You know, we come and see them every year when we come up here, and it's wonderful to see see what folks are doing, new projects, and uh, just wonderful meeting all the people here who come by and visit our booth. And and there's a, it's, it's great. One of the things we found as we go and visit some of these other booths is that it turns out the people who are running it also happen to be ham radio operators. That's true, yes. And uh, there are many of them embedded in this whole collection of people. And uh, uh, you know, hams, hams have a whole variety of interests, and some of them are not necessarily in what we're doing here, but they're still involved in inventing and, and, and uh, coming up with new ideas and implementing them, because that's kind of part of the history of ham radio. Okay, so I'm kind of running low on battery. Can okay. you introduce uh, the rest of our, your crew here? Sure, sure. Hey, attention. Okay, uh, we'd like to introduce everybody. Just uh, tell, them, tell them your name. Lisa, KF6QNG. 
Here's Patricia Yee. And let's take us over to... Guys, introduce yourselves, please, to the oh, camera. To the camera. I'm Paul, AA6BZ. Hey, I'm Brian, W6BY. Okay, we got some weird stuff here. Yeah. And introduce yourself to the camera. Hi, Mr. Camera. Oh, hi. It's Mr. Microphone. Hello. I'm Joel Wilhite, KD6W. Very good. Thank you. Okay, so any last minute things to sign off here? Okay, I think uh, we would like to encourage anybody who's ever thought about getting a ham license to do it. It's really easy to do. You can get information at ARRL.org, the National Association's website. There are people, local clubs all over the country willing to help you and uh, get you involved and see how much fun you can have. Okay, thank you. Good